Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we're going to take a look at a native 1080p projector from UUO. Keep watching to find out more. So today we're going to be taking a look at a projector from UUO. Now this is a relatively new company on the market, so I thought I'd give it a test drive and see what it's actually like. We've seen a few projectors in the past, all around the similar sort of price band, around about the sort of £200 mark. Now for a native 1080p projector, around about the £200 mark is pretty much your entry level. You can spend considerably more money, uh, up to £2,000 on a decent 1080p projector. So for £200 or thereabouts, not too sure what we're gonna get, but let's go through the unboxing process. We'll get it set up, take a look at it, and I'll give you my impressions and thoughts. So first of all, the packaging. Packaging looks really nice, nice retail type packaging. Uh, not the usual kind of brown box that we're used to seeing. So yeah, it looks pretty decent, and it pretty much says what it is on the tin. Home theater in a box. So let's take it out of the box and see what we actually get. So first of all, we've got our accessories box. So taking a look in here, I'd imagine we're gonna get the usual suspects. So yeah, we get a Installation guide or reference manual, all the bits and pieces in there. We get a HDMI cable. There is a UK three pin plug, and this type of adapter uses the kind of kettle lead type adapter, which we're all used to seeing. Obviously, depending where you buy this from, you'll get the appropriate adapter for your country. We get a AV adapter, so this plugs into the projector and allows you to plug in older devices, such as Nintendo Wii's, that sort of thing, maybe an old Mega Drive, that kind of thing. Um, camcorders even. You can plug these in and watch your home movies on a big screen. We also get a nice feature. Now this is a uh, dust filter. So this is used in conjunction with the fans to keep the dust out of the machine and obviously help to give the machine a little bit of a longer life. This is something which we don't normally see on projectors of this kind of price. And also we get the usual remote control. Now this remote control I've noticed actually appears to have glow in the dark buttons, which is quite handy. So if you're uh, in a darkened room and you're trying to find what you need to do, the buttons will be slightly illuminated using that kind of special illuminated coating. So that's the accessories out of the way. Let's take a look at the projector itself. So this unit's come super well packaged. It's got this nice uh, foam packaging to stop any damage in transit. And we've got this really, really nice looking projector. So as you can see, the projector itself, really nice looking. It's got the UUO logo on the front. Uh, you've got an IR receiver on the front also. You've got a lens cap. Moving around to the side, on this side, we've got our uh, adjustment for the focus, that kind of thing. There's also a manual keystone adjustment. This actually has uh, up to 50 degrees worth of automatic keystone adjustment. So you don't have to angle it perfectly level. So if you're slightly down or slightly up wherever you're mounting it, there is automatic keystone correction in here, which is something we, again, we don't normally see at this kind of price point. Also on this side, there is the intake fan and that looks to be, yep, there is the filter. So you get two filters included, uh, removable and cleanable. So that's again, nice thing to see on a projector of this kind of price point. On the back is uh, some of our I.O. So we've got our VGA port. There's two USB ports, one of which is a USB and one is a five volt USB for powering those additional devices, maybe like a Chromecast, Fire Stick, that kind of thing. Now actually this does support up to 4K input. So even though it is a 1080p, it will display uh, sources other than 1080p. So it goes from 576 all the way up to 4K. I'll put a full list of the supportive resolutions in the description below. Uh, next to that, we've got the IR support, we've got our AV in, and also there's a headphone jack. So if you want to watch movies or listen to movies with the headphones connected, you can do so. Underneath here, we've got our kettle lead connection. Moving around to this side, we've got a SD card slot. So you can use an SD card or you can use a micro SD with an SD card adapter. You've got two HD ports. So this is HDMI, there's port one and port two. So you can have two different inputs connected to this. So if you're having this set up as a kind of permanent setup somewhere, you can have two sources, maybe like your Xbox and a Chromecast or Amazon Fire TV stick and a Chromecast or whatever your choices be, you've got two options there. So you can leave those permanently connected. On this side is the exhaust for the fan. And I can see there's some uh, some pretty decent heat pipes in there as well. So that should keep things nice and cool. Now, actually, this is rated to be less than 40 decibels with the fans on. So that is not totally silent, but 40 decibels is pretty much a lot lower than the spoken word. So kind of things like being in a library, that kind of thing, 
pretty quiet, so this should be pretty decent. On the top, we've got a selection of buttons. So we've got our main power button, which appears to be illuminated. There's a, a ring around the outside of there and the buttons themselves, although not particularly clearly labeled, there's up, down, left, right, and an okay button. So making selections in menus, that sort of thing, raising, lowering volume, all that sort of stuff. Although you can do all that from the remote control, which would probably be easier depending on where you mount this thing. Moving around to the bottom of the unit. So we've got four rubber feet uh, to keep things nice and stable if you're on a surface. Also, you've got mounting area there. So if you want to mount this to a projector mount, maybe a ceiling mount and that sort of thing, you can do that. There is also on the front a height adjustment, which uh, screws in, screws out. So again, if this is on a flattish surface and your actual screen or your display area is slightly raised, then you can use that to change the adjustment of it. Yep, so all in all, looks pretty good so far. So next thing to do is for me to get this thing powered up, set up, and we'll take a look at some of the images and go through the menu settings. Okay, so there we are. This is in um, the Mike's Unboxing Studio. I've turned off the studio lights and we've just got daylight coming through the window. So I haven't closed the blinds or anything. This is projected onto a relatively plain wall. Um, it's a white-ish wall and it actually looks very, very sharp. Now this is using a Amazon Fire Stick. So as you can see there, got all the usual stuff, your videos, movies, all that kind of stuff. And yeah, it looks really good. The first thing I've noticed actually is the speaker is really, really loud. So let's uh, let's have a quick look at some apps. Yeah, this is a really nice picture. The sharpness is excellent. So again, you're going to settings. Now this does actually support uh, Dolby HD. So you can actually set your sound if you wanted to, to Dolby HD. No problems there whatsoever. And yeah, it actually looks, looks really, really nice. So we'll have a quick look at Star Trek Picard is very popular at the moment. The ultimate night of freedom. You know, I'm being so rude. You're my guest, please. Wow, the audio is fantastic. There's a five watt speaker and it sounds really, really good. In fact, I might turn it down a little bit. Previously on Star Trek The Car. Disorder of Romulans? The only Romulans are ever similar, as far as I know. So there we go, there's a brief uh, look at that, so I don't want to get any copyright strikes. But yeah, you get the general idea. It's a really, really nice picture, even in what is pretty much daylight. And let's have a quick look on YouTube. So let's take a quick look at my uh, review of the uh, not quite perfect FAR B1. Very good price, covers all the bases, but there's a couple of little potential downfalls which I thought I'd let you know about. So first of all, let's go through and introduce the parts. So first of all... So now I've re removed pretty much uh, most of the background lighting in the room. There's still a little bit, I can still see where I'm going, all that sort of stuff. Using to build in this case, maybe slightly higher, slightly lower, but somewhere around that kind of level. Uh, also using the V-Color RAM, 16 gigs of the Prism RAM. Powered by a CIT 80B 500 watt Pro 80 watt bronze power supply. Again, pretty much in the reason of what most people will be potentially using in this kind of setup. So very, very nice indeed. The the sharpness, the picture, the contrast is actually really good. It's got a seemingly a very good contrast ratio. So let's go back to our home screen now and we'll check out a movie. So let's watch the trailer for Blade 2 and get me an idea of what fast action scenes are like. Okay, so as you can see, it works really well. No motion blur, it looks actually fantastic. Really, really pleased with that. So let's take a look into the actual menu for the device. So in the menu, you've got your usual stuff. So you've got your picture quality. Uh, I've got mine set to vivid, color temperature medium, aspect ratio 16 by nine. Obviously you can set that to uh, whatever you want it to be. You can zoom to various levels. Uh, Auto is probably gonna be the best one to leave it at, to be honest with you. So we'll leave it at auto. And we can go back to the menu. So noise reduction is on low, projection direction on front desk, so you can do it upside down if you want to. And the HDMI mode, you've got a choice of either PC or AV. So a few little things there. You can reduce the picture size as well, so if you want to, you can actually uh, reduce that. Sound mode, your standard. 
music, movie, sports, user, all those kinds of things. Uh, balance, you can change the balance as well if you want to. Uh, auto volume, I don't really ever want to use that, I don't think. Uh, options, you've got on-screen display, restored defaults, blending, keystone. Let's go into the keystone actually. So you can actually uh, adjust the calibration horizontally and vertically. And auto adjust is currently off, even though it actually looks really good. So let's turn it on. And there's virtually no difference because it actually was set up pretty well straight out of the box. But you can have auto adjust on. So if the actual projector is slightly off key, then it will sort out for you. Again, you've got a reset, so you can reset all those back to the factory defaults. You can do a software update via USB, should there be any updates. And you've got the sleep timer. So if you want to watch a movie and get it to turn off after you're done, so you set a two-hour timer or whatever, you can do all those kinds of things. But a pretty basic menu, to be completely honest with you. There's not a great deal going on there, which actually keeps things nice and simple, in my opinion. So back to the uh, the main screen. So on the remote control, you've got up, down, left, right, fast forward, rewind, all that sort of stuff for uh, audio visual, so USB stuff. You've got mute as well, so you can actually mute the sound. And like I said, the sound quality is excellent. It's actually pretty loud as well. So yeah, all in all, very good. Very good quality display. The image is actually very sharp. And even from, I'm probably about seven foot away from the screen at the moment, it's projecting about a six foot, seven foot diagonal uh, display at the moment you can display anywhere up to uh, 300 inches on a display so the further our back you are from the actual screen the bigger the image is so if you're five foot away from the actual wall then it'll give you a, a roughly a 50 inch display 60 inch display at six foot 70 inches at seven foot and you get the general idea so the further you're away the bigger the screen will get obviously it is only 6,000 lux so it uh, it is a lot brighter than a lot of the budget ones on the market but just do bear that in mind depending where you are. If you're outdoors, it is going to have a slightly uh, less brightness, so you may want to be closer to your subject. But I think for most people, home use, this is going to be great. Now, at the moment, that image is roughly about 60 inches, I would say, and it looks absolutely brilliant for gaming, for watching movies. Absolutely fantastic. It's super sharp. Even with my old man eyesight, it still looks absolutely great. And if I put my glasses on, yeah, it is super, super pin sharp. So there we go, pretty nice bit of kit. 1080p looks absolutely great, even on the wall, which is a, basically a plastered wall, which isn't perfectly smooth. It's got wallpaper over top of it and satin paint. So it's not the perfect thing to display the image on, but it still looks absolutely great. Uh, in between finishing off this video and actually doing that, watched a bit more of the movie, played some games on there, put the hook up from the PC behind me, playing some Counter-Strike Source, uh, also some Far Cry 5, absolutely spot on no problems whatsoever great image quality and the sound is actually fantastic it's only a five watt speaker but it really does put out a lot of bass and it's really super clear even if you're just watching regular tv from comcast or sky or whatever it is it's going to look and sound absolutely fantastic now one thing i forgot to mention is the uh, dimensions of this unit so width wise uh, 12 inches or right about 31 centimeters depth wise you're looking at nine inches or 23 centimeters give or take uh, also a little bit more on the front for the actual lens itself but not a great deal more and for the actual height of the unit we're looking around about four and a half inches or so about 11 and a half 12 centimeters so a relatively compact device so if you've got yourself some shelves or something you could put this mount it on a shelf leave it there and then use it when family come around or you want to have a bit of movie time all that kind of thing really really good downsides now there are some downsides to this i would say the fan is a little bit on the loud side uh, although if you're watching movies and you've got the sound turned up it does drain it out pretty much completely whilst we're watching a bit of blade there and also while i was playing games the fan noise completely disappeared in the background. I didn't notice it at all over the other stuff that was going on. The other downside would be the location of the HDMI jacks. On the side for me isn't ideal. Again, depending where you put in this, you may want to have it look a little bit more discreet so you don't really want something sticking out the side. But again, you could always get a right angled uh, HDMI connector and have it sort of tucked away. But very, very minor niggles for something which is actually probably worth a lot more than they're actually charging for it. So at the moment in the UK, looking about £230 uh, on Amazon. In America at the moment, around about $250. So that's actually a pretty good uh, trade-off. If you're buying these in the US, you will get them for a fantastic price. I will be putting links for these in the uh, description below. They are affiliate links, so if you do buy one, we get a little bit of a kickback on that. Uh, it doesn't affect the price you pay in any way, shape or form, just it helps the channel to uh, 
continue growing. So there you go, that has been the UUO 1080p home theater projector. I'm pretty impressed with it, hopefully you guys are too. Um, but yeah, if you wanna check them out, check out the links below. But in the meantime, I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.